Uh, so let's let's get to the the Florida Georgia game and the two timelines that everyone should be paying attention to is and this goes back to many uh, Lenny Curry conversations that we've had here on our show, not just the most recent one that got everyone you know fired up, was that it's basically two year options that they pick up, and as soon as they pick up this option, which is the the twenty four and twenty five, you're working on twenty six twenty seven and that two year option for twenty eight twenty nine. Well, we all know what's coming. And that's going to be a stadium reno. So this tells you that this is solid. And then the next big step, at least it would make sense to me, the next big step will include negotiations for a stadium, which will also include where Florida and Georgia are going to be playing beyond 2025. That's the way I'm that's the way everyone's reading. And also that's the nature of how these deals are done. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had Lenny Curry on, I remember back in the fall and Mm -hmm. the nature of how the Florida, Georgia, Georgia, Florida Mm -hmm. contract has been is it's two year increments. Correct Mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. Oh yeah. 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 So it's obviously a big win that they've signed on for two more years with Kirby smart Mm -hmm. and all the noise coming out of Athens of, I need this game at home for recruiting purposes. Uh, Shout out to the NCAA for then saying, uh, huh. Now you can bring recruits. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't bring them around Athens, you could show them to the world's largest cocktail party and under a national stage that they would play on. Not that Georgia doesn't play on a national stage every week. But But this is one of the showcase neutral site games. Exactly. The, I would argue, in the SEC. Outside of, I mean, in terms of neutral site, I can't think of another one. The only three you have, honestly, year to year, are Texas-Oklahoma, the Red River rivalry used to be the Red River shootout, uh, and Army-Navy. And then you, Florida, Georgia is the marquee neutral site game. There's no doubt about that. You have these other games that are sprinkled in here and there, but this is the marquee consistent every year without you know that, that interruption except for when they were renovating the stadium. What, what do you think that Florida and Georgia annually get from the Florida Georgia game? It's as far as as far as I'm sure they, they cut the revenues in half yeah. or whatever. It's basically, on, on average per year, you think it's in the I'll, I'll I'll pull it up, but it's in the neighborhood of. Five and three quarters. It's like eleven million every mm-hmm. two years, okay. something in that neighborhood. So, what would be the different the difference between if they had a home and away? You're almost cutting it in half. Okay, if you if they yeah. did a home and away, so yeah. they they make an essentially double. Yeah. doing the floor. Yeah. Oh, that, that's a no and brainer. It is a marquee setting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's where we're at, and then and, they'll and go if if this all goes down. Yeah, yeah listen, I'm I'm all about tradition too. Mm-hmm. So those, those kind of games, those marquee games like that in Jacksonville, I mean. I, I knew about it when I was playing in Miami. Yeah, I yeah. knew about those games. You know, I would watch them. I and, mean, and the w- cocktail party, it, it just it it speaks for itself. It Absolutely. Is, it may not carry all the weight as far as some of the legendary mm-hmm. games because of either Georgia being down at one point or Florida being down as things sit right now. They're down in this in this rivalry, but you got to keep this rivalry here. Uh, but this is what we talk about when this team, if it moves for a couple of years. We know that that is a potential reality, okay? And then those two teams host consecutive years. Just like one they in, did in the 90s. In, yeah, they did it. And, and that's everything when this, was fine. Yeah, that's when the stadium was back. built. But mm-hmm. they knew then that they were coming back. This one is at least a little more up for discussion from the Georgia side compared to what it was in the 90s. So I have – this is from Gatorsports.com, and this is as of October of 2022. Mm-hmm. UF and UGA each make – Four and a half to five million. Yeah, I was thinking five and a half. So, so moving it, 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 it said would be at least a two million dollar hit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And here's the other thing too that if the Jaguars just like this notion of oh well what if they go play in Gainesville or Orlando then they'll never come back if they are building a multi billion dollar stadium state of the art here they will come back and additionally if you're Georgia and Florida. I mean, especially if you're Florida, wouldn't you rather play in a state of the art NFL stadium for one game than a the swamp, oh, yeah. which is oh, yeah. also in need of renovation. And by the way, even though you can't host your athletes, your recruits on campus those times, but now you can bring them into the game, this is a marquee game to show off. Mm-hmm. It, it really is, and both yeah. sides get to do it. Yeah, I mean, what, what kid from any of these areas wouldn't want to be on the sideline when a pivotal game with Florida Georgia? Come mm-hmm. on now. I mean, that would be a kid's uh, – ultimately a kid's dream to be yeah. on the sideline. Yeah. And then not only be on the sideline, but then when the former players come back, Come on, you might you might see Emmett on the sideline. You might be see Herschel on the side. I mean, come on now. If you're a kid like that and you know you're a historian and you love Florida, Georgia, and you understand the history, being able to interact with those former guys is, 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 is pivotal. Yeah. All right, so let's use the Florida-Georgia game as a backdrop. And we set this up, biggest sports bet 
you've ever lost. <clears throat> you can hit us on our YouTube channel. What's up? What's up? What's up? Go to YouTube. Check us out. 1010XL. Real easy to find. You'll see the uh, show going on live. You can throw your comments on the on the chat down there. JJ, give this it give a little Yahoo incentive. Pop off chat line. Yahoo! There you go. Let us know what's up, or you can hit the text line, or you can hit us on social media. Uh, the the reason I bring it up is because the Lakers Nuggets series was unfolding. And Jay Will, you see him on ESPN doing his show, and somebody calls up and says, I bet you the Lakers are going to take this series. Now, this was – Which, when, by the way, happens to us yeah. on the text oh, line. Yes, all the time. And on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Basically. I will bet you X, and yes. it's usually a big sum, okay? A With thousand. some random guy I've yeah. never met. Yeah. Hey, man, JJ, people <laughs> – I'm not going to do that. JJ, sir. people want to bet me. I could have had some cash. <laughs> See, when we have the wing eating – or the uh, uh, the rib eating competition, yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to take bets on you. No. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're actually going to – I'll be the bookie, and if yeah. people want to bet against Leon, yeah. I'm willing to bet them. Yeah, so you're going to put some odds out there is what you're <laughs> yes, going to do. Yes, absolutely. So, My favorite part of that about the rib mania, by yeah. the way, which in case you missed that part of the show, because I know some of you were just joining in as you head out to lunch, um, it's going to be June 27th. You will be eligible to enter between June 5th and June 23rd by texting the word rib to the text line. Um, we will have more instructions in the days and weeks to follow. Um, but what's funny about it, JJ, is I said something to, you know, our sales team about like, oh, well, you know, we got to make sure we have ribs for, you know, everybody. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, everybody's going to eat. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe some other people in the break room, you know, want to also participate. And they were like, do you realize how many ribs we're going to have to get just for your yeah, show? Exactly. <laughs> Good point. And they're I was like, up. you're not wrong. Yeah, they're going to pile up because uh, we are consumers of protein. Shout out to Sonny's. Yeah. Uh, they and, hook and, us up. I don't worry. Yeah. And, I'm and not worried about them. Sonny's will definitely come through. And I, I know our, our man Shannon Snell, I don't know if we can convince him to get is into the Shannon, I was contest. about to say, is he in it? Because he's that's the, a lot more. Uh, he's red. the referee, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's going to wear the pinstripes on this one. But the, to tie it all together, <laughs> As far as the betting goes, Jay Will gets a call, and somebody says, I'll bet you a 1000 bucks the Lakers beat the Nuggets and move on. He goes, really? Okay. He goes, you know what? I'm so convinced of what I think versus what you think. If it happens, I'll give you $1,500. i will give you $1,500. Bet's on, right? Everything goes the way it goes. Sweep, brooms, we're out of there. Lakers are done, done, done. Well, Jay Will says, you know what? I'm going to find this guy's number. He called us, called him back, and said it's time to pay up. We'll find this guy's <laughs> number. Okay, it's time to pay up. So instead of the listener disappearing or the viewer, in this case on ESPN, disappearing into the ether, he's like, write that number down. Yeah. And he got him back on the air. So nice. think of the biggest <clears throat> bet you have ever lost in sports and, and, and let us in. Now, look, w- one quick story that ties to Florida Georgia is I got this mouthy bulldog, and this is when the Gators are just on the comeback. And it's the classic line uh, in the early 80s, mid-80s, where Florida was number one for a total of six days. It's mm-hmm. the first time they had ever risen to the number one ranking, and guess what? Butts beat by the Bulldogs six days later. What year was this? Uh, 1984. 84, yeah, okay. Uh, right, yeah. uh, 85, excuse me, because that was the year that they came back. And so, okay. uh, and so, I, you know, everything is just like you, you just, you're thinking this is, this is now the beginning of turning it. Florida had lost, 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 lost to Georgia. Anyway, I end up having to walk around school no. with a stuffed Don't bulldog do oh. and a gator stuffed in he his mouth for a week. Wow. Not a day. That's pretty, that's pretty harsh, week. bro. That's pretty hard. Uh, for the total of six days that Florida was number one. So, yeah, I was uh, – mm-hmm. yeah, t- At I, lunch, in class, every, on dates? Whatever I did. I wish I actually could remember that. I think I might have been able to warm up to, uh, to one of them if I had that stuffed animal. I don't know. But, yeah, oh, uh, I, that was the, left some scar tissue, wow. I can tell you that. Now, there's been other money bets, that's for sure. But that's yeah. the one that kind of hits me the most. Yeah. I'm, Mia, uh, Mia, big bet. You- Oh, you got to start with Sir, so I'm still trying yeah. to come up with it. I'm yeah. not, I'm oh, not biggest, really a betting gal. Uh, oh, listen, my biggest sports bet is easy, 1992. Oh, there All it right, is. All right, 1992, okay, you got to remember where I was, okay? I was a uh, training camp holdout with the Steelers as a rookie, all right? I was on the scout team. I was, I was, I was a second-team player. I was not enjoying my NFL life, let me just say that. But the one thing I had is my Miami Hurricanes were winning football games. And I'm in the locker room. I'm selling out. Miami this, Miami that, Miami this. So – the championship game, Miami versus Alabama. I'm taking all bets. I'm in the locker room. I'm betting a thousand here, five hundred here. <laughs> Coaches want a piece of me. I'm 
I tallied up. And when the game was over and Miami lost, what, 33 to 14 to Alabama? All of 12 grand I had. Oh. 12 grand. 12 grand. That's pain, man. Huge, nasty cash. I mean, I had to pay everybody from coaches, assistants, teammates. Yeah, that's my biggest sports bet anyway. That's a loss. That's a loss, bro. JJ, did did you have to go deep in your pocket ever? Um, All the time. Yeah. Um, But not like that. I mean, like, I should have obviously went before Leon. (laughs) Um, But I I lost something closer to me than just money. Uh Uh-huh. Your soul. Alabama, Georgia. Yeah. National championship right after Georgia beat, or I mean Alabama beat Georgia in the SEC title game. I was convinced there's no way the dogs are winning this. I bet not only a few hundred dollars that I lost. If you listeners remember, I bet my mother's life. <laughs> and uh, wow. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I lost. I so I am poor, so I don't have like thousand dollar bets that I'm losing. But yes, I've certainly lost uh, multiple hundred dollar bets many times. Uh, one instance, it wasn't necessarily a bet, but I have a picks contest with my buddies every year where we pick against the spread every single NFL game, okay? Every week, every game. The winner gets multiple thousands of dollars, all right? I was leading by one game with the last Sunday night game of the year coming up, okay? The guy behind me, we can't tell which team, what, which each other picks, and so, like, all night, you know, after the 4 o'clock games, I'm, like, trying to get him to, you know, tell me which one it is. Da, da, da. He's not giving up. So, anyway, I picked the – it was the Eagles game where they were up at halftime. They take all the – this was Dougie Fresh, his last yeah. game, I believe. Yeah. They took all the starters out inexplicably, I guess, to, like, get a extra couple draft slots up. Do you remember that? Yeah, kind of. On a Sunday night? Yeah, I remember that. And they lost the game. I think it was the Redskins at the time. Because it was the end of the NFC East. Yes, and I had to split the winning. So I lost like a 1000 bucks because Dougie Fresh took all the starters out of the game. Uh, My worst, and I'm done after this, my worst loss, though, it wasn't like all the money. It wasn't about all the money I lost. It was just the worst bad beat, as they like to say on SVP show was when South Carolina was coached by Steve Spurrier. I don't know if anyone remembers this specifically, but it was on Jefferson Pilot mm-hmm. at 12.30 in the afternoon, and they were up by, like, nine or something, and I covered barely by a point. I flipped the channel when they were kneeling the ball with, like, 20 seconds left. I look later. I didn't have the money in my account. I'm Ooh. freaking out. Ooh. I look at the score. Spurrier had ran the ball through the back of the end zone to take a safety to end the game instead of kneeling because it was like a fourth down. There it is. It's over. It, it, that Money was gone. the worst beat I've ever had. Oh, I've Thank got some you. of those That now. is truly an SVP. Bad, Bad beat. Mm. Uh, 219 on, 2129 on the text line brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures is now worried that my MyBookie commercials aren't real. Um, <laughs> yes. they, they are oh very God, real. I didn't even think of they that. They are very real. No, so I will. 